The Promising Future of Laminar Flow Aircraft Laminar flow means the smooth, uninterrupted flow of air over an aircraft's wing. The recent adoption of laminar flow aircraft has brought attention to it. Does it have a future in the aviation industry? Laminar flow in airplanes The drag solution for aircraft surfaces and features smooth layers of airflow with little to no mixing of adjacent layers. The design of the cellar fuselage takes advantage of an optimum length-to-width ratio to maximize laminar flow. These benefits will not scale for large jet transports and are therefore well-suited for an aircraft like the Cellera. Laminar flow is categorized from the smooth and parallel flow paths that a fluid exhibits without intermixing. In aviation, laminar flow essentially represents the smoothness that air exhibits when it comes in contact with aircraft surfaces. When the air passes through the contours of the aircraft fuselage or wings, the streamlined feature of the airflow may change. The turbulence, thus induced, can have a negative influence on aircraft control. This includes the effect of drag and lift. The airfoil should therefore be designed well enough to preserve the laminar regime of the airflow to minimize drag and increase the lift of wings. When this air moves at low velocity, a streamlined flow of air is observed which is the laminar flow of air. To maintain this laminarity, the airfoil is usually made thinner with a pointed edge and made progressively thicker while maintaining near symmetry of the wing cross-section. With the increase in velocity, the turbulence increases, producing drag and affecting the quality of the flight. What is the laminar flow boundary layer? Air possesses some level of viscosity. This viscosity results in the formation of a thin boundary layer of air on the aircraft's surface. The laminar flow zone can typically be determined with Reynolds number, which in the case of external flow occurs at less than 500,000. Depending on the surface roughness, the transition can start earlier or after this point. As the laminar boundary layer facilitates a quick and smooth flow, less friction drag is produced. A well-designed laminar flow airfoil can have almost half the level of drag as turbulent flow. The total drag force acting on an airplane surface can be analyzed using the following formula. The effect of the drag force equation. For a wide range of Reynolds numbers, the laminar drag coefficient can be calculated as the drag coefficient for laminar flow. In an effort to reduce the friction drag, designers tend to make the aircraft surface as smooth as possible. Any irregularities, even as small as dirt, are enough to disrupt the laminar boundary layer, which causes an increase in drag. The role of CFD tools in facilitating aerodynamic design. In an analysis of the aerodynamic properties of a proposed airplane design, the evaluation of the laminar boundary layer, drag, and lift can be done easily through modeling and simulation. CFD tools such as Omnis, can facilitate the easy analysis of the governing boundary layer equations in aerodynamics. And with solutions such as pointwise, comprehensive mesh generation can be done to analyze the simulation accuracy of the airfoil. With high fidelity CFT simulations, the stability of laminar flow in airplanes can be investigated to improve the aerodynamic properties of the design. What does the laminar flow do? You become incredibly aerodynamic. You fly farther on less fuel. The really challenging part of this quest is that laminar flow is very hard to make, thanks to seams and rivets and hinges and flaps, and anything that sticks out or moves. All those objects break the flow and create tiny pockets of turbulence. When a fluid is flowing through a closed channel, such as a pipe or between two flat plates, either of two types of flow may occur depending on the velocity and viscosity of the fluid, laminar flow or turbulent flow. Laminar flow occurs at lower velocities, below a threshold at which the flow becomes turbulent. The threshold velocity is determined by a dimensionless parameter, characterizing the flow called the Reynolds number, which also depends on the viscosity and density of the fluid and the dimensions of the channel. Turbulent flow is a less orderly flow regime that is characterized by eddies or small packets of fluid particles, which result in lateral mixing. In non-scientific terms, laminar flow is smooth, while turbulent flow is rough. The relationship with the fluid dynamics Laminar flow is characterized by fluid particles following smooth paths and layers, 
with each layer moving smoothly past the adjacent layers with little or no mixing. At low velocities, the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing, and adjacent layers slide past one another like playing cards. There are no cross currents perpendicular to the direction of flow, nor eddies or swirls of fluids. Also, in laminar flow, the motion of the particles of the fluid is very orderly, with particles close to a solid surface moving in straight lines parallel to that surface. Laminar flow is a flow regime characterized by high momentum diffusion and low momentum convection. Airbus and several industrial and academic partners have committed to future research on laminar flow wings during a demonstration of the aircraft manufacturer's flight lab test bit at the ILA Berlin Air Show in Germany. The flight lab demonstrator aircraft is a modified Airbus A34-400 MSN001 that is currently performing flight tests to assess the feasibility of introducing laminar flow wing technology on commercial airliners. Airbus engineers believe the use of wings optimized to preserve the laminar flow of air and reduce wing friction could reduce aircraft drag by 10% and lower CO2 emissions by up to 5%. MSN001's flight tests are part of the Blade Breakthrough Laminar Aircraft Demonstrator in Europe project. The flight lab made its maiden flight with the demonstrator aircraft in September 2017. Fitted with two transonic laminar outer wings, a GKN aerospace concept with a metallic leading edge, and a SOV concept using carbon fiber reinforced plastic. The test aircraft, which is the first in the world to combine a transonic laminar wing profile with a true internal primary structure, has so far performed 66 flight hours and will continue flying until next year to explore the factors that influence laminarity. The aircraft is fitted with a flight test instrumentation station and is also using a number of firsts in terms of testing technology, Airbus said. This includes the use of infrared cameras to monitor the laminar flow transition points on the wings and an acoustic generator to measure the influence of acoustics on laminarity. Another first is the use of a reflectometry system, which measures overall deformation in real time during flight. The modifications to the A340-300 testbed aircraft took place over 16 months in Tarbes, France, with the support of numerous industrial partners across Europe. The Blade project is funded by the European Union through the Clean Sky Project, a 1.95 billion US dollars research initiative that has been running since 2008. Blade has involved more than 20 partners and around 500 contributors from across Europe. Airbus and several representatives from partner organizations signed an accord recognizing the success of Blade so far and affirming their desire to build on those successes in the future at the ILA Berlin Air. Reduction of Drag on Wings via Laminar Flow Control The history of laminar flow control dates back to the 1930s and is well documented by Chambers and, in particular, Braslow. LFC is also referred to as artificial laminar flow to contrast with natural laminar flow. LFC is an attempt to maintain the laminar boundary layer over a large part of the wing by effectively sucking the turbulent boundary layer through tiny perforations in the wing skin. A variation of laminar flow control, called hybrid LFC or HLFC, uses natural laminar flow for a larger portion of the wing to reduce the power required to eliminate the turbulent boundary layer growth. The primary drawback of such methods is that they are active rather than passive. In other words, additional energy is required to lower the pressure inside the wing and draw in the external boundary layer. Furthermore, it is a serious detriment that the perforations negatively affect the structural integrity of the wing, and the operator must deal with nuisances such as cleaning the remains of insects that can clog the perforations, reducing system performance. In summary, laminar flow gives new opportunities for transcontinental range, payload for nine adult passengers, cruising speeds in excess of 500 miles per hour, and enormous reductions in operating costs and emissions. This all becomes possible with extensive use of laminar shapes for the wings, fuselage, and tail section. Do you think the laminar flow airplane will be something to look out for in the future? Leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below.